Good afternoon. You have your host, Elder Kathy James, and we're here to continue with the book, One Month to Live, 30 Days to a No Regrets Life. We are now on day 14. Day 14, I'm sorry, day 13, which is sandpaper, smoothing the edges. Sandpaper, what do you think of when you think of sandpaper? Sandpaper smooths things out. Before you prime or you paint an object, what do you want to do? You want to sandpaper it. You want to get it all the blemishes off. You want to get that smooth so when you do paint it, nothing's going to uh, get off or it's not going to peel. It's going to go on just fine. Well, that's what the Lord is doing to us when there's sandpaper people in our lives. And again, we're continuing in the relationship, um, the second principle of the um, One Life to Live book. And again, on this book right here, I wanted to mention you can get this on the www.onemonthtolive.com or you can get it on eBay or Amazon.com. Um, real quick, I want to just say prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity to minister to those that are outside of where a church might be. They are here to learn. And I just ask, Lord, that I would just be your vessel and to just speak your words. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, sandpaper. We want to smooth out your edges. Iron sharpens iron. You've heard that phrase, right? Well, it does. It sharpens each other. Maybe there's somebody in your life that is difficult to deal with. We're going to talk about in a unique approach, which is the toolbox approach. We're going to look at tools in the toolbox and compare them to maybe the people in your life. How do you resolve the conflicts with those people who are irritating you, getting on your last nerve, so to speak? Um, they're in your life for a reason. They may be your test. Ephesians 2.10 says, We are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared us in advance for us to do. You are his masterpiece. We are continuing along that road, that goal, that objective, that destiny that he has for us. So let's look at the sandpaper people in your life. Think about that. Who in your life right now rubs you the wrong way? How do you usually interact with them? How do you relate to them? Well, we're going to take out, and if I had it in front of me, I could take out these in a, in a toolbox. We're going to gain the carpenter's perspective on people and performance. People and performance. We have to learn to see difficult people in a new light. Remember we had talked about before changing ourselves rather than trying to change other people. So here's a measuring tape. You take the measuring tape out. What does the measuring tape do? It measures. These people let you know that you don't always quite measure up. They feel compelled to set the standards for everyone else because why? They're perfectionists. Then you get that hammer. What's a hammer do? It's loud. It's demanding. It's not subtle and it's very manipulative at times. They are stubborn. They're committed to using their own will, their own force to get their own way. Skill saws. Skill saws, and I don't know exactly what this is, but we can tell it's a saw, but they're gifted at cutting other people down. Maybe you know somebody in your life at work or maybe in your family or maybe even a, an acquaintance that is sarcastic and forward to you. Um, they know your weak side and they going to press that little button every single time to get you to what? To be offended or to, to shout back or to just go off the hook and be loud just like they are. Don't go there. Vice grips. These are really needy people that hang on to you. They don't know when to let go. They have no clue to the social or relational boundaries. And I'm sure we can always relate to that and other people too. Grinders. Grinding, like you're grinding the, the sawdust. People with explosive explosive personalities that just want to go off and they send out sparks. Then there's axes, those who constantly cut a wide watch in their wake. Very, very, very messy. They tend to be always negative. You, you know people like this again in your life and what I tend to do, just as an aside, is go with something positive. Be uplifting, be encouraging, be loving, be supporting. Contradict the negative. Also, there's hatchets. They take the smaller chops, but they hold on to the past hurts and the grudges. There's puff putty people. We all know putty, fill in the crevices. 
They have no backbone, they're no consistency, they're very eager to please, and they're always very agreeable. We gotta see beyond the damage of these tools and instead determine how we can construct, like a carpenter, the master builder, construct a meaningful future together. Which tools that I mentioned bother you and why? You may want to, again, revisit this day, day 13, in the book and go back and say, okay, why does this bother me? Why does this type of personality in the tool shed really bother me? The carpenter's perspective is easier to criticize in Matthew 7, verses 3 through 5. It is in the NIV version I'm reading from. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How do you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your own eye when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. We're really good at what? Pointing out other people's mistakes? I know I've been there, done that before, sins and problems, but Jesus says, hey, wait a minute, look at yourself first. Remember, I, again, I said, change yourself. Ask the Lord to change you to relate to these other people that are, quote unquote, getting on your nerves. We want to be a healing agent, not a judge. We're not, up. Uh, that's, um, that's God's job is to judge, not our job. Essentially, especially in our families, we could be quick to point out other people's faults and criticize and overlook that glaring weakness in ourselves. If I forget about trying to change everybody else and simply work on letting God change me, then the people in my life will be much more open to me and to what I want to say. Amen? What happens with the so star, I'm sorry, sawdust? What happens with it? When you put it under intense heat, what happens? It becomes what? Particle board. It becomes a solid building material that we can use. Well, that's what God is doing to us in allowing us to have these types of people in our lives so we can become stronger and more and more like Him. In Romans 5, that's chapter 5, verses 3 through 4 in the Message Bible, it says, There is more to come. We continue to shout our praise even when we're hemmed in with troubles because we know how troubles can develop pa passionate patience in us and how that patience in turn forges the tempered steel of virtue, keeping us alert for whatever God will do next. In alert expectancy such as this, we are never left feeling shortchanged. Quite the contrary. We can't round up enough containers, hallelujah, to hold everything God generously pours into our lives through the Holy Spirit. Go back and reread that. Romans 5, 3 through 4. That is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful verse. Critics. Our critics can help us grow. They're our test. That's what God puts in our lives so we can continue to grow and be more and more like Him. We can be selective about criticism. Look at the chewing gum approach to criticism. You, you chew it and then you spit it out, right? We don't swallow the gum, right? We chew it and spit it out. We don't swallow it. 10% criticism is valid, 90% non-valid. If we think of it that way, maybe it's going to be a lot easier to listen to criticism as it comes our way. So the next time someone really sets you off, I want you to pause for a moment and start to pray and ask God a few questions. God, what are you trying to teach me through this person? What are you trying to do in my character to build my character? What are you trying to show me about leadership? What are you trying to re reveal to me about life itself? Did you ever stop and thank God for placing these people in your life? You know they're there for a reason. Come on now. You may be the only face of Jesus that they will ever see. Amen. And I want you to think about describing one person in your life who consistently rubs you the wrong way. How have you attempted to relate to him or her in the past? And if you only had one month to live, what would you want to tell this person? What's keeping you right now from doing such a thing? 
let's go on one more to day 14. We're going on to day 14. And day 14, I want to read really quick, and that is called The Gift, Thanking Those Around You. Let's be grateful people, thanking those around you. Gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. It turns what we have into enough and more. It turns denial into acceptance, chaos to order, confusion to clar clarity. It can turn a meal into a feast, a house into a home, a stranger into a friend. That's by Melody Beattie. We want to be grateful people. When was the last time you stopped to really savor a moment? And where were you? And what prevents you from having noticed more of these moments? Jesus heals 10 men with leprosy, as we see in Luke 17, verses 11 through 19. This was a test of all the, ten of, all of the nine of them, but only one came back. And it says in Luke 17, Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Note, there was only one of them that came back to show gratitude to the Lord. This is going to end this section right now. I'm going to take it up with the uh, remainder of day 14 and also day 15 the, in our next session. With that, I'm going to end and say thank you for listening. I'll see you next time. God bless.